The Klamath River, a silver ribbon winding its way through the heart of America. For centuries it has been a lifeline, its waters, a source of life for people and nature. From the high mountains to the Pacific Ocean, it is a vital artery. This is the story of the Klamath River, a river on the brink of a new era. The Klamath River Basin stretches for over 250 miles, it encompasses parts of Oregon and California. This region is incredibly diverse. It boasts towering forests, fertile valleys, and arid deserts. The river supports a rich tapestry of life. This includes numerous fish species, birds, and mammals. For millennia, the Klamath River has held immense cultural significance for Native American tribes. These tribes have relied on the river for sustenance, transportation, and spiritual connection. The river's health is intricately linked to their cultural identity and well-being. Today, the Klamath River faces unprecedented challenges. Decades of dam construction and water management practices have taken their toll. The river's once abundant salmon runs have dwindled, its water quality has deteriorated, the need for restoration is urgent. The story of the Klamath River dams is a complex one, woven with threads of ambition, progress, and unintended consequences that have shaped the region for over a century. It is a story of ambition, progress, and unintended consequences. The early 20th century was a time of rapid industrial growth in America, Towns were expanding and the demand for resources was skyrocketing. In the early 20th century the demand for electricity and irrigation water was growing. Communities were looking for ways to harness natural resources to fuel their growth and development. The Klamath River, with its powerful flow, seemed like an ideal source. Its waters promised to provide the much-needed energy and irrigation to support the burgeoning population and agricultural activities. The first dam on the Klamath, Copco 1, was completed in 1918. This monumental project was seen as a triumph of engineering and a beacon of progress for the region. It marked the beginning of a new era for the region. The successful completion of Copco 1 paved the way for further developments along the river. Over the next few decades, three more dams were built, Copco 2, Iron Gate, and J.C. Boyle. Each new dam represented another step forward in the quest to harness the river's power. These dams harnessed the river's energy, providing electricity to homes and businesses. The availability of reliable power transformed daily life, enabling new technologies and conveniences. They also created reservoirs, storing water for irrigation. These reservoirs became crucial for the agricultural sector, ensuring a steady supply of water even during dry periods. The construction of these dams had a profound impact on the Klamath River and its inhabitants. The river's ecosystem, which had evolved over millennia, faced significant changes. The dams blocked the natural flow of the river, impeding the migration of salmon and other fish species. These fish, which had relied on the river's unobstructed flow for their life cycles, found their paths blocked. The reservoirs behind the dams inundated vast stretches of riparian habitat. Trees and plants that once thrived along the riverbanks were submerged, altering the landscape dramatically. This displaced wildlife and altered the river's ecosystem. Animals that depended on the river's natural flow and surrounding habitats were forced to adapt or relocate. Despite the initial benefits they brought, the Klamath River dams soon became a source of controversy. As the environmental impacts became more evident, communities began to question the long-term costs of these structures. The environmental consequences of their construction became increasingly apparent, water quality declined, and the health of the river's ecosystem deteriorated. The dam's impact on salmon populations in particular raised alarm bells. Scientists and environmentalists noted the sharp decline in salmon numbers, a species critical to the river's ecological balance and local culture. As awareness grew, so did the calls for action. Community meetings and discussions about the future of the dams became more frequent, with many advocating for their removal to restore the river's natural state. In recent years, efforts to remove some of the Klamath River dams have gained momentum. Restoration projects aim to revive the river's health, allowing fish to migrate freely and ecosystems to recover. The vision of a free-flowing Klamath River is becoming a reality. As dams are dismantled, the river begins to heal, and wildlife returns to the rejuvenated habitats. The journey of the Klamath River dams is a testament to the complex interplay between human ambition and nature. It serves as a reminder of the importance of balancing progress with environmental stewardship. As the sun sets over the Klamath River, 
It symbolizes a new chapter in the river's history, one where nature and human aspirations can coexist harmoniously. The Klamath River dams, once symbols of progress, now stand as obstacles to the river's health. These structures, built in the early 20th century, were initially seen as marvels of engineering, providing hydroelectric power and water storage. However, over the decades the negative impacts on the river's ecosystem have become increasingly apparent, and the well-being of the communities that depend on it. Indigenous tribes who have lived along the Klamath River for thousands of years have seen their traditional fishing practices and cultural heritage threatened by the dams. Local fishermen and recreational users also suffer as fish populations dwindle and water quality declines. The decision to remove these dams is a testament to the growing understanding of the importance of ecological restoration. Scientists and environmentalists have long advocated for the removal, citing numerous studies that highlight the benefits of a free-flowing river. Community meetings and public forums have been instrumental in building consensus and raising awareness about the issue. The most pressing reason for dam removal is the plight of the Klamath River salmon. These fish are not just a species, they are a keystone of the river's ecosystem and a vital resource for local communities. The salmon's life cycle, which involves migrating from the ocean to freshwater streams to spawn, is severely disrupted by the dams. These iconic fish, once so abundant, have seen their populations plummet in recent decades. Historical records and photographs show a time when the river teemed with salmon, supporting a vibrant fishing industry and providing a crucial food source for indigenous tribes. The dams are a major contributing factor. They create physical barriers that prevent salmon from reaching their spawning grounds upstream. Even with fish ladders and other mitigation efforts many salmon are unable to complete their journey, leading to a dramatic decline in their numbers. They block the salmon's access to their spawning grounds. This disruption not only affects the salmon but also the entire river ecosystem, as many other species depend on the salmon for food and nutrients. They also alter the river's flow and temperature, making it inhospitable for these sensitive creatures. The stagnant water in reservoirs warms up more than the natural river flow, creating conditions that are unsuitable for salmon and other cold water species. Beyond their impact on salmon, the Klamath River dams have also had detrimental effects on water quality. The slow-moving water in reservoirs allows pollutants to accumulate, leading to higher levels of toxins and harmful bacteria. The reservoirs behind the dams trap sediment and nutrients. This sediment buildup can alter the riverbed downstream, affecting habitats for fish and other aquatic organisms. This leads to algal blooms that deplete oxygen levels in the water. Algal blooms can produce toxins that are harmful to both aquatic life and humans, and they create dead zones where few organisms can survive. This creates conditions that are harmful to fish and other aquatic life. Low oxygen levels, or hypoxia, can lead to fish kills and reduce biodiversity in the river. The removal of the Klamath River dams is a complex undertaking. It involves not only the physical dismantling of the structures, but also careful management of the sediment and water flow to minimize environmental impact. It requires careful planning, collaboration, and significant financial investment. Stakeholders including government agencies, environmental groups, and local communities must work together to ensure the success of the project. However, the ecological and cultural benefits of dam removal far outweigh the challenges. Restoring the river to its natural state will revive fish populations, improve water quality, and restore the cultural and economic vitality of the communities that depend on the Klamath River. The return of a free-flowing river promises a healthier ecosystem and a brighter future for all who call this region home. The Klamath River once teeming with life now bears the scars of a century of damming. This river, which stretches over 250 miles through Oregon and California, has been a lifeline for countless species and human communities for millennia. However, the construction of dams has dramatically altered its natural state, leading to a cascade of environmental consequences that are still being felt today. The ecological consequences of the dams are far-reaching and profound impacting not only the river itself but also the surrounding ecosystems and the communities that depend on them. The river's once vibrant ecosystem which supported a diverse array of wildlife has been significantly disrupted. The communities that have historically relied on the river for their livelihoods, including indigenous tribes, farmers and fishermen, have also been deeply affected. 
One of the most visible impacts of the dams is the decline in salmon populations. Salmon are anadromous fish, meaning they migrate from the ocean to freshwater rivers to spawn. The Klamath River was once one of the most productive salmon rivers on the west coast, but the construction of dams has created barriers that prevent these fish from reaching their spawning grounds. Salmon, once a cornerstone of the Klamath River ecosystem, have seen their numbers dwindle to alarmingly low levels. The decline in salmon populations has had a ripple effect throughout the ecosystem, affecting not only the fish themselves but also the many species that rely on them for food, including bears, eagles and humans. The dam's impediment to their migration, coupled with degraded water quality, has pushed these iconic fish to the brink. Fish ladders and other mitigation measures have been implemented, but they have not been sufficient to fully address the problem. The water quality in the river has also been compromised by the dams, with increased temperatures and reduced oxygen levels creating a hostile environment for salmon and other aquatic life. The dams have also had a significant impact on the river's hydrology. By controlling the flow of water, the dams have altered the natural rhythms of the river, which has had far-reaching consequences for the entire ecosystem. The natural flow of a river is essential for maintaining the health of its habitats, and any disruption to this flow can have serious consequences. By regulating the river's flow, the dams have disrupted the natural flood cycles that are essential for maintaining healthy riparian habitats. Floodplains, which are areas of land adjacent to the river that are periodically flooded, are crucial for the health of the ecosystem. These areas provide habitat for a wide range of species and help to filter pollutants from the water. The disruption of natural flood cycles has led to the degradation of these important habitats. These altered flow regimes have led to the decline of native plant communities and the proliferation of invasive species. Native plants, which have evolved to thrive in the specific conditions of the Klamath River, are being outcompeted by invasive species that are better adapted to the altered flow regimes. This has led to a loss of biodiversity and further destabilization of the ecosystem. The reservoirs behind the dams, while providing water for irrigation and recreation, have also had unintended consequences. These artificial lakes have created new habitats, but they are very different from the natural river environment. The stagnant water in these reservoirs is prone to warming, which can have a range of negative effects on the ecosystem. The stagnant water in these reservoirs is prone to warming, creating favorable conditions for the growth of toxic algae. Algal blooms, which are rapid increases in the population of algae, can produce toxins that are harmful to both humans and wildlife. These toxins can contaminate drinking water supplies and create dead zones in the water where oxygen levels are too low to support life. These algal blooms pose a threat to human health and can be lethal to fish and other aquatic life. The toxins produced by the algae can cause a range of health problems in humans, including skin rashes, respiratory issues, and even liver damage. For fish and other aquatic organisms, the effects can be even more severe, leading to mass die-offs and further destabilization of the ecosystem. The environmental consequences of the dams on the Klamath River are a stark reminder of the complex and often unintended impacts of human activities on natural systems.